Hello and welcome to the Overshadow Shadowcast with your host Thomas Anderson and our tech wizard Abigail Moat. Hello again folks. Well today is yet another day with no guest apart from Mr. Computer here. Computer's always happy. Computer is always a nice lovely uh, forthcoming guest with lots of lovely information that we're able to relay to you. Well at least yours is, mine just, mine hates yours me. Just mine hates me. Fans. So First question as always, what have you been playing? And we will start with Abigail. I have been playing, I keep forgetting the name of it, Star Wars Galaxy, Galaxy of Heroes. Heroes. And not Galaxy Quest, I keep thinking <laughs> it's called the Galaxy Quest. It is not. That's an amazing <gasps> film, but yeah, that is not the case. That means your, your squad would be like Tim Allen going pew pew. That would be quite cool. His special power would be to phone Justin Long. That would be it. <laughs> Do you remember the bit in that film, the scene in that film where the it's wee kid is going two, two, one, two, nothing, nothing, two, <laughs> one, zero, zero, one, two. It's just like looking at it while she's ha and she's having a meltdown. No, I don't. Uh, it's been so long since I've actually watched it. I don't think he says nothing. I think I just forgot the word zero and said nothing to cover it. <laughs> nil, one nil, two nil, two two. <laughs> Um, so what, what's new? Um, well I am now on, on, what did I, what was I on last time? Level 30, 39? Level 19 last time. Last yeah, last time. time you were on level 20... No, 19. 19. I was on level 19 last time and now I'm on level 37. Yeah. And that's been a week. <laughs> Aye. Yeah. Um. But as I said, it really starts to slow down the higher the level because the level cap is 85. I feel like it's starting to slow down already. Because it, it, it keeps you going because every time you level up it gives you bonus energy that you can then use in a fight to get experience yeah. to level up faster. Well what I'm doing is now I'm sort of doing what you suggested which is sort of keep replaying certain levels so I can get the... Certain fights, yeah. Certain fights, sorry. Um, so I can get the, what was it, the tokens to unlock characters. Shards. Shards. I know no words. <laughs> no words at all. It's just a specific nomenclature. Okay. So, I've unlocked raids. Thank you, computer. But I can't start a raid yet. I have to wait till my guild leader starts a raid and then I don't know what happens then. I don't know either. I've never been part of a guild other than when I started and I've never started a raid. Because you're limited in how many raids you can do by the raid tickets you need. Right. Um, so we earn raid tickets by just doing normal fights. And yeah. then we're yeah, able to that. use those to do a raid, but I've never done one. Uh, and I would rather wait until your squad was a little bit more comparable to mine. Well, that's what I've been trying to do. I've been trying to get the shards so uh -huh. that I can... What characters have you decided you like the look of? Well... That what what's which character is your your like main? Baris Offie. Yeah, I'd like that, but I've not seen I've not seen any shards <clears throat> for her yet. She's probably my she's my least offensive uh, capable character. If I was to recommend one to you, I'd probably recommend. Well, you I said use, Ben, Ben Kenobi. Ben Kenobi's kind of useful, and you can get him kind of quick. But I would say that my team is Mace Windu, uh, Baris Offie. Um, Ahsoka Tano. Right. Uh, Grandmaster Yoda. And. I've recognised two of those names so far. Oh, what's the other one? Luminara Unduli. Right. She's a healer with a very good heal space. She's not as good a healer when it comes to the. Uh, every uh, turn. Baris Offie heals up the units a certain amount. She does a lot more mm -hmm. than Luminara, but Luminara's actual healing spell is is heals up like half a player's character over a couple of turns. Yeah. Oh, a player's character, sorry. A character's health each turn for a couple of turns. Which if you then add to Master Yoda's ability for him to give his buffs to everybody else means that it gets doubled. Yeah. So that's a good team. But uh, you were saying you don't do the gear. Uh, so the gear, the problem with the gear is that if you've got a load, do it. If you don't, 
save it until you've got a character you want to use it on. Yeah. But if you can find a really, like, you've already got, like, a hundred odd pieces of, like, really easy to find gear, mm -hmm. you might as well do it just to do Yeah, because I've not quest. even been really um, training up my players so far. It's like saving it yeah. for more powerful players. Characters. Yeah. Yeah, because a player is you. But, uh, mm -hmm. um, but, um, yeah, the, so the quests are things that it challenges you to do basically every day so that you can level up. Yeah. Uh, it gives you bonus XP and crystals that you can use to buy stuff and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, so far what I'm loving yeah. is when I go into like the dark side battles mm -hmm. and I have to randomly choose, you know, you know, you can choose a random player to sort of join up. Mm -hmm. I love it. I think it's your, was it Darth Vader's your dark character, is it? Yep. Yeah. But you're talking about the party leader, specifically. Yeah. I think that's one you can borrow. Yeah. And the party leader. I think it's yours anyway. I think it is. He it's, gives. Sith it's and, brilliant. Yeah. It's brilliant when I get him, but it's literally he just like holds out his hand, it's, and it's like everybody's gone. It takes me virtually no time yeah. at all to go through those those battles. Yeah. He's got the power which uh, shockwave thing, which yeah. is supposed to be him grabbing all their throats, and what it does is it it damages him but also debuffs them all mm -hmm. um, and then he's able to throw his lightsaber for the next turn yeah to yeah there's one where you yeah. can like chuck your lightsaber and then attack with the lightsaber well if you chuck with the lightsaber you can immediately you can only if you kill yeah but I'm, I'm on the bait I'm on but the it's low. such an easy fight yeah. you're obviously getting a kill so you're yeah, then getting like, oh yeah I might to make it easier on you put a uh, I leveled up Darth Maul in because Darth Maul, if he kills with his regular attack, he then gets another attack and that's constant. Right. So you'd be able to just go <laughs> kill the whole team and then move on to the next one. I might do that, but I don't, he's not, my Darth Maul's not powerful enough for that yet. Mm -hmm. I'm also stuck on the basic training. Like, uh, was it the events? Mm -hmm. You do basic training, I'm stuck on tier three. Yeah, you will. You get stuck on those uh, events. I get stuck in them all the time. I'm not powerful enough to do the mythic ones yet, but I'm level 85. So it's really hard to get the gear that you need and the money to level them up at that point. Yeah, I've been saving the money as well. Mm. I'm not just spending it on frivolous things. Well, there is an advantage to le uh, leveling up uh, and ranking up the different characters when it comes to the... Um, guild fights because even if you don't normally use them you get an advantage because you deploy your yeah. entire squad a whole I, just, lot of I just like the fact that whenever i was leveling up you just kept messaging me say okay now go to this bit i can't go to it there i'm not i'm not high enough level yet mm. it's like well go this I'm still not there yet <laughs> not everybody's 85. <laughs> but I can't, not everybody's your room yeah but it was so long ago that i unlocked all that stuff i can barely remember when i did it i know what it was like to play before i unlocked it but i can't remember exactly when i did it but um you need and to keep i've just been adding random random friends now yeah when i get friend requests i just add them well no you want the most powerful people you can get mm, nothing about doing that okay you need to start doing that <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah it's uh it's um it can i already know what team i want to have it's just because it locks away some of the characters it can be a bit difficult to actually get a team together without relying on luck the team that i want All right but because i can already see just how amazingly overpowered that team would be <laughs> be incredible he's just tommy's just looking up into the sky like <laughs> He would do for like Jolie a Bindo good can uh, he can revive any knocked out Jedi with eighty percent of their health. So right. if you've got a team of five Jedi and he happens to be the only one left, he can go boof and wake them all up. Boof. Yeah, that's an incredible move. And then Basila Shan starts off the if she's fully leveled, she starts off the um, the fight. Yeah. By buffing everybody with this mm -hmm. incredibly powerful shield and yeah. all sorts of other things. Um, but she then can buff an ally. So if you buff Yoda, he can then in next turn buff everybody else. So they all end up with their, like eighty buffs. <laughs> <laughs> so they're incredible. I can already yeah. 
But what I am doing is I'm starting to strateg strategize when I'm in my battles. I'm not just going for it and playing, right, this person has the skills. Yeah. Utilize it. Strategize. 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 Mm. Is that a natural word if I just made that up? You've made that up. Strategize. <laughs> strategize. Strategize. <laughs> I strategized her eyes. Oh, man. Right. You are tired. <laughs> strategize. <laughs> Strategize. Strategize. I thought that was a word. It sounds like a nice word, but it's not real. We shall make it real. <laughs> this is the beginning of it. In 50 years' time, they're going to go, where did we ever come up with this word? <laughs> so what are the rest of your strategizements for the uh, the rest of playing the game for the next week? Pretty much just trying to get shards. Trying to get the player trying characters get the, you want. Yeah. But it's a good thing, you know, is that you can see who, what all the characters are. Yeah. You don't have to have unlocked them all to see what characters you yeah. can so unlock. I'm, I'm, about, I'm about a third of the way through to get Darth Vader, so that's pretty good. Yeah, he's a good character, but he's very difficult to max out the rank. The rank is what you need for the shards. So you get one star up to seven star, and that's yeah. the rank. And then you get gear ranks, and you get character level. And all that sort of stuff. Yeah, but hold, I thought you said shards was how you unlock a character. Exactly. Okay. And they unlock uh, with a certain star level, Which star, star rank. One. Yeah. Well, no, no, like Darth Vader should be f four. Oh really? Yeah, it's it's ten, fifteen, so twenty five, twenty five for level three, so that's fifty, and then it's thirty or thirty five for level four, so it'd be like eighty. Yeah. So that he'll be level four. No, if you get um, General uh, Kenobi, you yes. need 330 to unlock him, I think. And that's level 7. Okay. Rank 7, sorry. Comes in at rank 7. Mm -hmm. Which is, rank is just a star count. Yeah, but one thing kind of keeps annoying me is it keeps asking me to do stuff for the quests. Mm -hmm. But I can't do it at the moment. Really, what is that? Certain levels, so it's, it's keeps, you know, uh, enter. I don't, I don't know what it was, but do this bit. But you need to have level forty and above to be able to do it. I can't remember what it was, but that was one of them. And obviously, it keeps saying do raids, do raids, and I can't because I'm not the guild right, boss. Right, but is it is it the quests that are telling you to do that, or the other little things? Because there's daily quests. No, no, the other little thing. Yeah, because the daily quests don't ever ask you to do something you can't do, and they're the ones okay. I'm saying you should do. The okay. other ones you just do when you can, but don't worry about it, but the daily ones are the ones you should do every day. Okay. Right, I will try and do that, okay. and I'll try and get everything unlocked and as try and possible. And try and ask for gear so I can help you get more gear, because that helps both of us. Was I able to do it the other day when you asked me to do it? No, to you didn't. It? No, you can. Re you did before, remember? You just yes. have to do it every day. And you didn't. Uh, you keep forgetting. Uh, I just thought you wanted me to do it that one time. I didn't realise you wanted me to keep doing it. You have to keep doing it. I don't want to. Well, if only you had the power to make decisions for yourself, which you don't. I have free will. Eh. <laughs> Yeah. I do have free will. Mm. Yeah. Not for the purposes of this video. No. <laughs> so you're going to keep playing that? Yes, I will keep and I'll try and get back to GTA 3 at some point when I'm not physically repulsed by the thought of having to go try and do that level. <laughs> Save again. that one armed man again. Oh my god, not again. Right. Um, so shall we move to me? Okay, if you want. Okay. So. Considered. <laughs> so I, of course I, I've just been waiting for you to stop talking um, so I, I have played some more Halo 5 this week multiplayer uh, had some really good games but not really anything worth uh, I had a lot of fun not worth really anything oh pardon me the voice is going it uh, not really worth anything worth telling about I had a good game I might put a picture up of it where it was a Halo 2 or Halo 1 sorry it was anniversary games they replaced castle wars with these anniversary maps mm -hmm. so you play different game modes on different maps from the previous games like yeah. halo 1 and halo 2 uh, and this looked like a halo 1 map that i'd never played before i didn't play much halo 1 multiplayer and um i did not know the map at all i didn't know the weapons that were beaming in you started off with an assault rifle and a halo anniversary pistol 
uh, but that was it. And there was rockets, sniper rifles, shotguns, grenades all over the place, camo, active camo, but I just couldn't, I didn't know where anything was. Uh, and then we went down a man when one of the team uh, mates left. And then... Um, you went what? Went down a man when one of my teammates left. Is there a 4v4? I thought you meant like you walked down a man or something. Like that. That's what it sounds like. No, we went down a man. We went down a manor. Um, <laughs> but I, I actually had a, a the KD, a kill to death spread of 5 kills to 10 deaths. What does that mean? I killed 5 people and died 10 times. Right, okay. But a KD spread. But uh, so the spread would be about minus five. But by the end of it, I really got the hang of it. I understood the map very quickly. Yeah, it was probably the first time I can ever tell, say, just with such clarity that I got what I was trying to do uh, from the point of view of not having a clue in the one game. Because about halfway through, I was on a KD of five to ten. By the end of it, I was twenty to fourteen. Wow. So I got 15 kills to 4 deaths in yeah. the last couple of... Little... In fact, I got a medal, which I'll put a picture up as well, called the Clutch Kill, I think. Which means that I killed someone to put us in the lead with only a few seconds to go, and then we won 44 kills to 43. <laughs> That's pretty so, good. Yeah, that was a really great game. Really, that novel experience of just seeing myself get better, feeling it, you know. Can I, can I ask a quick question? Uh-huh. See the Halo games, do they all... Is it all a different war? Because it's a war game, isn't it? Halo. It's a war game. It's a shooter, yes. I thought it was a war game, like it's set in a war. Shooter. Is it set in a war? Yeah, of course, it's a shooter, so yes. Yes, it's what? set in a war. Is each one set in a different war? Is this like like set in World War Two or World War One, or is it like... Okay. I don't even know if we should air this part because it really makes it look like you haven't got a clue what you're doing. Um, I don't know what Halo is. I've never it's played a Halo. Fi- it's a futuristic war. It's set in ah, 2550s. Okay. The first one's set in 2552. Okay, because there was some sh- shooter game that was set in World War Two. I didn't know if that There's was one many, of There's many, many, many shooter no. games set in World War Two. but Forget yeah, which it. is it? No, continue with the... What, is this a game coming out or just recently? No, I think it was released in the last year or so. Call of Duty World War Two. That's it. That's why it's stuck Call in of your Duty. head. That's, That's a game, why. yeah, pointless game. Don't buy it, don't play it, don't look at it, don't treat it with any decency and respect. Okay, someone obviously has some issues with the game. It's just a rehashing of previous uh, World War Two storylines. It doesn't do anything in new, anything interesting, anything worthwhile at all. So Just that one or all of Call of Duty? Well, to be honest, most Call of Duties now, I kind of like the look of Infinite Warfare because at least they were trying something different. But World War Two is just a rehashing of their own games because they made a World War Two Call of Duty game for f- the first one, for the second one, and for the third one. Right. There's also other little Call of Duty games. I think Finest Hour rings a bell, something like that. Yeah, I mean they've made World War Two Call, and it's just completely ripped off. They tried to change some of the mechanics, but it was basically previous stories. Okay. It's just pointless. So I apologise for interrupting you there for a completely pointless No, that's fine. It's, it's a future game, so the weapons... You've got alien weapons, which are like energy-based, and you've got human weapons, which yeah. mostly use bullets. And that's it's an interesting dichotomy. It's a really interesting war, because when it starts off, the humans are like... basically screwed because <laughs> they're fighting against an enemy that they know nothing about who's massive technological advantage yeah so it's uh, it's a uh, I can't use a certain phrase I would like to use to describe it but it's not going well uh, but yeah but that's what endears I think endears people to the to the humans uh, uh, human characters around so it's like them. you're fighting for your species species yeah yeah I was like, it's not nation, it's not race, what's it called? It's species. species. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, I think that big part of why people attach to Halo is there's a really cool main character, you got really sassy, I mean, Halo 1 if we were talking about, Halo 2 as well, really sassy other characters, really good characters like Cortana and... and uh, How are they sassy? I don't think I'd describe it as sassy, but I know other people would. You just would. did, you just described no, I it as wouldn't, sassy. No, I wouldn't, but I think other people would, so that's why I used it. I'd describe Cortana as being colourful. 
Okay. But anyway, yeah, and, and then you've got Sergeant Avery Johnson. You've just got lots of nice wee characters, and you're endeared to them by the fact that it's a fight for the species, not oil or anything else. Like every, everybody pegs World War Two as being a fight for freedom, but it sort of wasn't. Otherwise, we'd have had that fight a long time ago. We wouldn't have let half the stuff they did be done if we were that worried about it. So. Obviously, you know more about history than I do. Well, he was in charge for a long time before we started World War Two. And the simple fact of the matter is we didn't bother doing anything until it started to become a threat to us. That's not a fight for freedom, that's a fight for self-preservation. And it's a fight for self-preservation on a really personal interest grounds, whereas Halo is much more about saving a species so that there's a future in it. That's really about it. Okay. Uh, I've also been playing the crew <clears throat> and um, I've been showing a certain video Crew's the racing game I've been playing Yes, the one the, where you were hitting invisible walls and. Y y well, not invisible sort of I think during the crate dr races where you deliver the crates to get car fragments to get new cars yes. which is different from car parts to improve the car you've got yes. is that I found that when you there is an occasion almost like you'll feel a shunt from behind and nothing will be there or you'll try and turn and you can't quite do it and you start to think what's going on and then you sort of realise it's lag because it's partially online it's a simple case of there is a car behind me at least according to the computer or in this case the Xbox but I can't see it because I've not caught up yet <laughs> so I've been shunted by a car that isn't there yet but is and that's sort of where the problems Ghost are coming car. from. Yeah. But I've found that with the, uh, the story I'm going to tell here, this is the best example. With these, there's, there's also escapes where people can try and escape it from the police, mm -hmm. but I've never been able to start one of those, only join in as a helper. So I think that those are limited to the DLC. But when it comes to the crates, everybody can join in and help each other. I get regular requests to join in and help other people sometimes drop into my game, right? And it's like two games I dropped into where there was such severe lag, it was ridiculous. Now, it's like 70%, 75, 85% of the games that you'll play will have some lag with the cop cars and it's sort of survivable. I'll have a, a video up here at the minute showing that. And as I said, I might just cut our talking so that people can see the whole video and I don't have to talk through the whole thing if I'm not talking for long enough. But it's a wee bit jump around, there's a bit where a car crashes into a pylon, it doesn't look quite right, but it's survivable. But there was another one where I, I showed this to everybody I could find, right? I sent this to my wee brother, this was just ludicrous. Because the, <laughs> the cars, I was hitting cars, other people were hitting cars, I, I mean the cars were, the cop cars were behaving reasonably okay a bit of jumping around but it was survivable and I was using my flashbang which causes the cars to veer wildly to the side because the idea is the driver's been flashbanged right so the police cars go whoa and that's to help the guy get to where he's trying to go so the problem that we had I had was that the cars in this particular case were taking off when they were being bumped they were taking off <laughs> into the sky and flying off. It was ridiculous. They were literally, bang, whoa. One car got hit by a police car and basically it stopped moving forward and just picked itself up off the ground and I had to drive basically underneath it because it just went, whoa. It was ridiculous. Must be the same people that make the grease cars Or then. the Chitty Chitty Bang Bang Mobile. But it was ridiculous. I mean, I think the biggest problem was, uh, for me, try to capture the content, was when you're pl this is a disaster for the game, because it's got a, f a, a photo mode, so you can take des deliberate pictures. Yeah. But see if you're in a multiplayer instance, mm -hmm. right, where you're actually playing with other people, and you hit the dashboard key to record something. Once you've recorded it, and you'll see this in the video, I suddenly, uh, you're not in the race anymore. What? As soon as you hit the dashboard button to record it, you're kicked from the online instance. That's not, that's not good. That's stupid. Yeah. That's a completely non-functional game. Their online play, the cornerstone of the game, doesn't work properly. Hmm. So why are you lagging? Is it just because... It's, it's not me, it's the 
no that, that, that's it's not that's something why is it happening well it could be the fact that i'm on an original xbox my internet service is but see the point is is that i have been noticing that i'm getting kicked a little bit more regularly from halo games but not while they're playing only when they're trying to load in I genuinely don't think there's any problem with my online capacity when it comes to the console or my Wi-Fi. I think it's something to do with their end with the game. It's unstable. Okay. I think that's the problem. And once you've got too many people, it causes the instabilities to like manifest or multiply. That's unfortunate. Yeah, which is a shame. But I, w- I actually... I um, have some feedback on some other games, but at the minute I would still recommend playing the crew if you can get it for like 15 quid because I'm having fun with the story and just driving around. And if you've got a group of people who would happily play it with you, it's definitely worth that. Yeah. Um, is this just on Xbox or is it also on PC? Did you I believe say? it's on PlayStation. It's not on PlayStation. I think it's on PC, yeah. Okay. But it's... I'll wait till I get, get my new computer and then I'll... I, I would look at Crew 2, to be honest. Because you can't do the story with a group of people. So, I, I, if you were playing it just to play with a group of people, I'd say five to ten quid. Okay. Yeah. Also, I don't think it has cross platform, so you'd only be playing with people who are playing on the computer. Ah, oh, well, then we'll buy it then. Yeah. Not till I get the Xbox. Just to go back to those games I was talking about, I was previously playing Dark 3 when I recommended it to people to get. Yes. I recommend playing the first tournament. The rest is complete. See, once they introduced the Jim Canna, then it. I had to stop playing it because it forced me to do Jim Canna stuff to unlock enough points to unlock the next race that wasn't Jim Canna. So I was stuck being forced to do the bits of the game that, as far as I'm concerned, are broken. You just don't have the feedback in the controller or the control of the car. The scores that you have to get, or the time you have to get, oh yeah, you were saying that completely th- random. Yeah. You ha- it has nothing to do with what you do. I lost by twenty one seconds. I'm not bad enough to lose by twenty one seconds. Was I in reverse? Was I going the wrong way? It it just it's n- no, it's nonsense. Is this the one where you were saying that to get all the achievements, you had to do something rid- like a ridiculous time, or you had to get a ridiculous amount of points? few weeks ago no no it wasn't to do all the achievements it was although i think that is there's an achievement for it but it's to get the, the platinum award on the drift That's you had meant, to get yeah. a hundred thousand a hundred and forty thousand points i'd got 134 and a half and i'm telling you i've squeezed everything out of that you just don't have the feedback you need to do it mm-hmm. it's like it might be tailored for uh, steering wheels maybe they can do it but a controller can't so i mean sell your game with it I mean maybe they did sell it with a steering wheel but it's just a nonsense mm. it, it starts off really well and I and I had a lot of fun if you can get it for free or like three quid you can have some fun with some of the races but it's complete nonsense talk when it comes to some of the later stuff it's not worth getting <laughs> do not get Dirt 3 because as far as I'm concerned it's broken message received uh, I, lastly I tried the free weekend on Rainbow Six Siege and there's two things I really love what they've done with sponsoring and keeping a hold of their fan base because they've turned the entire thing into an eSport now. Mm-hmm. The Rainbow Six Siege comes from the Rainbow Six Games uh, and it's about uh, basically uh, a tactical unit. Think FBI SWAT but bigger or better or whatever. And they diff- over the course of the different games they're basically they go into situations where bad guys are who either have bombs or stuff that's been stolen or hostages and you have to kill everybody and save the hostages or defuse the bomb or whatever. Yeah. And this particular Rainbow Six Siege doesn't have a storyline and I immediately thought, okay, I don't like that. This is purely multiplayer. Now, they've, they've continued to um, support it and so they've kept the audience, the, the, the customer base happy and that's I'm really happy they've done that they've got like three years worth of uh, additions to the game mm-hmm. um, but if you do look at the game and take all that out there's nothing in the game see when people originally bought it there must have been nothing there absolutely nothing because what I'm playing I'm just playing what was there originally just because I'm trying to learn the game Yeah. nothing the situations which are basically just practice they're not real they're set up even though people get shot in the head and blow up they're not supposed to be real apart from the end mission of that which is article 5 um, that is real with real people but you play with other people whereas with the other situations you're by yourself mm-hmm. 
and they to consider that training and testing. Article 5 is the first mission you do. Uh, but the lack of storyline for me was important because it meant that apart from not having something I could play by myself properly, because the situations aren't really good enough for repeats, you want to get three stars, but that's it. Yeah. And I love the previous storylines um, for previous games, is that it gives you no way to practice with a team because you're by yourself or with real people. You're not with a team of controllable AI which would give you an appreciation for how you can use the different unit types because there's 20 different units, I think, 10 attacking, 10 defending, and when you set up to do a mission, you've got to pick. This would give you a great appreciation for how those units interact and their variability and how to leverage it if there was a story mode mm -hmm. that used them all. No, no story mode. So you have to go straight in, and the first time you're actually trying to leverage multiple units is when they're all controlled by other people that you can't talk to. <laughs> so it's, it's not a team of five, it's a team of five ones. Okay. You mean you're technically all on the same side, but you're not really functioning as a unit. You're a sort of going... Running around yeah. headless chicken. So when I was playing, three of us all threw out these remote control droid cars that you drive around to tag the enemies. And the other two didn't wait for us to do it. They just kicked the door in and ran around, started shooting people. So we ended up... When we, you've got to do get in, get a bomb, there's reduced visibility so you can't see. You've got to find two bombs and defuse them. But when you're defusing them, you've got to hold the room for 30 seconds with like waves of bad guys coming in. And you can't see. So you all have to take doors and windows and cover them all because you can't see across the room. If you're down to three people because two guys ran off and got killed, you're done. So you just, it just can't. You're there forever trying to do one mission because you just need a team of five friends to do it. Yeah. Um, secondly, uh, there's friendly fire and there's, I mean, griefing, right? Griefing in this instance, right, as I just said, is friendly fire. Okay. Do you know what that is? Yes, I know. When you right. get shot by your own people. Exactly. So griefing is when people do it deliberately just to annoy people, right? Trolling ah, might right. be another okay, way of phrasing yeah. it. And I have a video which I'll put up here where we beamed straight into the defend mission and I immediately got shot in the face by my own team. <laughs> Like immediately, oh, instantaneously shot in the face. And then they revived me Did you and again? shot me again. <laughs> and there's no punishment, there doesn't seem to be, a, there's a punishment for your score, but there yeah. doesn't seem to be a punishment like you get kicked for a couple of hours or anything like that. You can't even report it. It's not considered, like in Halo, if you betray someone or someone betrays you and kills you, you can boot them from a game or in Warzone, you can have them punished in some way. But in this, nothing. There's no record. Absolutely nothing. So they're just gunning everybody down. Half the matches I'm in start with a firefight where everybody kills each other. That would be fun the first time and then after the first time. I didn't know what was happening. I oh, genuinely right. thought for the first time I did it that I had somehow ended up in amongst enemies. Yeah. There were human drop-in enemies that joined in and made your job harder. But no, it was my own team. I was really confused. I was watching this, like, what's going on? Why am I... And then it said support mode. Like, I was watching my own team, and I realised that's the guy who shot me, and he's on my team. I've been friendly fired, but why am I not getting any way to punish him? So it's... You... I really liked the look of this, because I wanted to play it with my brother, and then I found out there was no storyline, so I'm like, well, what's the point in that? But there's terrorist hunts where you can play the AI. Mm -hmm. So I, I would recommend this game if you can get it reasonably cheap but I would try and get the full edition because there's nothing to do in the basic one really and try and play it with a group of friends because if you end up with a group of randomers you're in trouble you're in quite a bit of yeah, trouble yeah because you just can't trust that they're not just yeah. going to muck and you can't, up. you can't interact with them properly to organise a team effort whereas you can with friends on team chat Yeah. but it's just a nightmare but it's, it, it's a good game technically it's good but I don't know why there's no story because there's, 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 there's plenty of room for one. They got really good voice actor for that lady person and then didn't use her. Don't understand. I, I just disagree with what they did. I'm very happy, though, that they, they kept supplying the fan base. They supported the game. They didn't just run away. Well, that's good. So from that point of view, they deserve what they've, that they've earned. So um, I said last week that we were going to be looking at a couple of games, Phoenix Point and Phantom Doctrine, that were made um, by the uh, 
I don't think it was the actual company, but some of the people who worked on XCOM worked on these games. Yes. So that is a name that just kept popping up. Yeah, XCOM was... is a game we will be playing. It's a very, very difficult sort of strategy <laughs> tile-based shooting game. Do I need to bring up the stealth game I played again? This, uh, it's not XCOM's not stealth. Phantom Dro- Doctrine is stealth, but it's like stealth XCOM. Yeah. It's XCOM isn't stealth because you run around in bright blue armor. Yeah. I'm gonna. Uh, I can't wait till we're actually able to record games, and I'm just gonna have just everybody's just gonna be able to listen to you just yelling at me. What are you doing? Stop doing that. Well, no, because what I was thinking we could do for stealth is that there's lots of things where it's like two or three ways to play. Yeah. So I could do stealth properly, and you could do your interpretation of stealth, <laughs> which this I think like, would be funny. This is like when when um, we were little, and Mom would try and get us to bake. It's like I can make my cake, and you guys can make your own special little cakes, and <laughs> it'd be just a complete disaster. No, um, my mother helped me make pies, and we didn't have one for me, and one for her. We made pies. So that's how I remember, I know how to make an apple pie. was because I was making the one that people were going to eat. I don't know how to make an apple pie. You must teach me. I know how I made the pie, the apples. The pie de pomme de terre. I thought pomme de terre was potatoes. I'm putting potato in it. It's a potato pie. It's a sweet potato <laughs> pie. How do you add le sucre? <laughs> um... Uh, people that I watched did a video doing a Hitman playthrough where one of them got like all the kills he was supposed to another one got like 40 extra kills and another person killed like 149 people yeah so that'll be what we do I'll be killing everybody that needs to be killed you'll have murdered 400,000 people I'm just going to be standing in a corner just turning round and round and round and round that's what I'm going to be doing you will be looking at the controller a lot I think thinking how does this uh, how does this oh I'm dead and your character's just like gone walk about randomly in front of all the enemies who are just, just looking walks, at him like just walk gone and walks off a cliff <laughs> <laughs> but there, backwards like, but backwards just like you've gone up and sort of like strafed towards the bad guys and then walked backwards off a cliff I will be kind of cannon fodder <laughs> that's not cannon fodder that's just a distract that's a suicide distraction um, so uh, they're made by uh, the people who are involved in making XCOM now Phantom Doctrine's already out and this is a 1980s based uh, spy, th- spy, th- spy thriller spy stealth game yeah, yeah. Uh, and from the looks of it the whole idea is not to get into a firefight yeah because you're in trouble if you do because you've only got was it two members of well, your team well what I what happens is I believe that the enemy has an awareness an, an awareness bar yep and you have to make sure that that's slowed down as possible you could be in the same room and as long as that bar's down you're fine yeah that's when they can't see you they don't know you're there yeah and when it comes to the shooting, uh, they have the ability to dodge, but there's no hit rate. If you can see them, you will hit them unless they dodge. Yeah. So it's not. So the fighting, obviously, it, the reason that that's there is because it balances. Oh, you get magic bullets, obviously, that bend. But the whole idea of it is that you are not able to take on groups of people. Because mm-hmm. in XCOM, if you got outnumbered, you could somewhat rely on the luck of them missing, yeah. and then you could take them all out. In this, you can't, mm-hmm. because they will hit you. Yeah. So it's if you start a firefight, you are in trouble. You need to absolutely book it and get out of there as fast as possible. Yeah. So I think the one mission that I saw was where they tried to assassinate someone. That's going to be a lot of them, I think. Yeah. No, I think a lot of them, because on that mission, there was secondary objectives to take pieces of intel that you could take. Yeah. And and there might be missions like that where you're taking intel and the secondary objective is to kill someone, but I can't help but think that game might be a wee bit tedious, even for a stealth lover like me, because... It looks as if you're you're going to be so punished by getting caught and it's going to be so hard and fiddly not to get seen that it's going to be like, oh, just do the main mission and run. You're not going to be able to like explore it and have a bit of fun. You're not going to be able to enjoy it. It's literally get in, get out type yeah. of scenarios. I mean, I could have... I think the, the problem is once you've learned the rules, you can have a bit of fun with it. 
Yeah. Like how it, it, not how it's supposed to work, but how it actually does. Like if you stand on the other side of a bunch of flowers and for some reason the game just decides you cannot be seen. That sort of thing. You just need to learn the, how it actually well, works. Well, I saw, I saw something like that where uh, I was watching a playthrough and the guy got in, it's like a small little room, like an office type of thing, but had like two small armchairs in it. Mm-hmm. The guy you were after was like sitting behind that armchair. You were able to get into the room and almost be in his line of sight, but for the but awareness bar still was really, really low. Aye. So you were able to get them. You were basically standing in front of him yeah. like I am now to you and you yeah. couldn't see. Although we are not behind armchairs. No, we're sitting in them, but I don't. I don't think I could stand behind this four foot tall chair and suddenly be invisible at six foot two. You know, so like, oh, there's a floating torso in front of me. <laughs> um, that's just that's just nonsense. Um, I thought that was hilarious when I saw that. I was yeah. like, I also noticed that you can put people on Overwatch, but the Overwatch, uh, you have to pick a direction. It's not. Oh, well, I didn't know what the Overwatch, Overwatch was. basically means that they get their weapon ready and if an enemy walks in their line of sight they take the shot. Okay. And there's an aim penalty usually for it, which makes no sense to me because they're prepared and ready to shoot. But I think it's because it's a reaction shot. Okay. Which does make sense to me. But in XCOM it's every direction. As soon as you see an enemy in any direction, spin and shoot. Yeah. In this game it looks like you pick a direction and if an enemy comes from another one then you're just flanked. That's it. Okay. Apparently the Playthroughs I was watching, people were getting pretty sick and tired of the pinup board, the global, uh, the not the global, sorry, yeah. the the cork board where the you put all cork pinup board where you put all the, the intel and things yeah. like that. People were just getting fed up with it because it took so long to sort of just go through it all. Do you the have to, I was watching. Do you have to actually solve the? Uh, I think you do. Puzzle? Well, yeah. what it sounded like, it sounded like yeah, they were doing, because it, it sounded like they didn't really want to do it, but they had no option. Yeah, I I think those things can be very bad if they give you these sort of questions or clues, which could be multi, answerable. If you know what I mean. Yes. Like well, that could ease. I, Many I mean, interpretations. I, I see how that answer is rainbow, but it also could be chair. <laughs> you know, it's like. It's like you put your gold underneath I want to know, it. I know what to do. Gringotts? Hold on, why would you put gold under a chair? I was going more for a rainbow in that one. But if you put... I know, but I was thinking rainbow in chair. Yeah, like, it has legs? Oh, come on. <laughs> you know, it's... Because I did the same thing with uh, the Sherlock Holmes and Jack the Ripper. Sherlock Holmes versus Jack the Ripper. Where you have to catch Jack the Ripper. That's an and they've game. got Yeah. My brother got me it for Christmas, like eight years ago or something it's really good sounds good <laughs> it is good we might play it but um, you have to put all these answers together to make it make sense yeah sometimes it just doesn't like why does that match and I think the idea is that's the only one left but if you've got one wrong then it obviously doesn't you know yeah so sounds like a lot of fun that one well the testament of Sherlock Holmes was pretty funny and I think apparently the one that I've still to play, the Devil's something or whatever that my brother played. Yeah. That looks really good. I really mm. want to see that. But I think the Testament of Sherlock Holmes is actually based in like nineteen forties or something like that. But they go back to the eighteen eighties. Huh? I as in they think about the history. Okay, I thought you meant they were like time travellers. No, 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 it's like they're telling kids a story. Oh, okay. But it's... So it's uh, like flashbacks. Not even that. It's no, like it's just story. story. You just play out the story. No. I remember, do you remember I told you about my mother? She solved the tutorial, pu- the tutorial puzzle? No. She solved the tutorial, pu- tutorial, tutorial puzzle for the Testament of Sherlock Holmes. And um, we were all really impressed. And then we ordered Chinese and sat down and we told Dad about it. She got it like that. He says... That's because it's a book. <laughs> That's one of the puzzles for the book. That's a story. And mum's sitting there like, why did he tell them? Like laughing her head off, but also, because uh, there are a lot of the puzzles they make up themselves, but that yeah. particular one was already a, an established one to teach you the um, mechanics of the game. Yeah. But I we thought it was brand new. I always love a puzzle. I love game shows where there's puzzles and well, stuff. Well, that's like interesting because that. I don't think you're any good at solving them. You've not seen me try and do an anagram. 
I can't do anagrams. I cannot because do anagrams. Because my sister, my sister will not watch certain shows with me. Like, uh, was it Pointless? Uh-huh. I think I can mention that. There's an anagram round. Aye. And Emily, sa- Emily says to me, my sister, she says, God, I hate playing this with you because your dyslexia is like a superpower. It's already in the right way for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember I was watching the University Challenge and I got like 180 points because there was so many medicine and biology questions yeah. that I was just like, like horse rides, proxides, buffy coat, you know, all that sort of, like, I remember I was watching The Chase and there was yeah. a Halo question in it. What It was uh, during the sequence where they rack up the chase number that the chaser has to follow. Yes. And he said, what is in the video game series Halo, what is the main character's name? Yeah. Now, when it comes to name, this isn't the answer. They said Master Chief. That's not his name. That's his rank. His call sign is Sierra 117. And his name is John. So they got that wrong. Yeah. And I, I said John. He said Master Chief. And everyone's looking at me. And my brother, who knows this is the case, was looking at me like waiting for my head to come off and go through the TV. Yeah. It's just like, no. It's no, it's no, it's it, no. And I suddenly became Glaswegian. No, no, it's no. It's, like, it's John, which I'm keeping that. See if I ever meet Bradley Walsh. <laughs> hey, me a son, right? I don't think Bradley Walsh is the one who comes up with the questions and the answers. No, no, no. Don't hey, take me Bradley Walsh. Bradley, right? I'm not going to leather you. I'm just going to tell you you're absolutely screwed up, son, son. Right, come here. Put my arm around him. Right, listen. Then I did it again. Right, on you go, son. Cheeky, cheeky boy. <laughs> what was that you patting him on the back? Palm on the bum as he goes. Um, what about Phoenix Point? What did you see about Phoenix Point? Uh, this is not me get my notes. If you hear wrestling, that is a page. Because I, like many people, still use paper to write notes. I still he- use paper, I just don't take it. So anywhere. the stuff I saw before you pointed out to me that it's not due for a release until 2019 it's like June 2019 so I I have a sneaking suspicion this might not actually have been that game but it said it was so people were again comparing it to XCOM Mm -hmm. and much like XCOM uh, was a game made in the 90s early 90s I think they remade it in the late 2000s very good well the way to move about is similar to what was the one we just talked about? Phantom. Phantom Doctrine. Phantom it's tile Phantom. based, and you select a place for your guy to yeah. run to. Yeah, it's basically the same thing. It's like a yeah. grid system again. But this one's much different from XCOM, and I think from Phantom Doctrine, from the point of view, you, because you're firing a weapon, you you can't fire your weapon if you move too far. Yeah. Because you've only got so many action points. Yeah, that's or what in they this were, game, yeah. as they called it, time. Instead of action points, it was time. So you've got two action points on XCOM. You can move within the blue, uh, one area mm-hmm. and then do an action, like shoot yeah. or reload or whatever. Uh, or you can dash, which is to run the whole distance you can move, which is to use both action points for running. Right. There's certain powers which alter that, but that's the rough concept. In F- uh, Phoenix Point, you can, because it's time, you can move within the area that you can move within mm-hmm. And then keep moving. You with XCOM, if you moved, that was your first move. It didn't matter if you used the whole distance, you'd used a move. In Phoenix Point, you can move tile by tile. And it only counts as you using the first move once you've moved the far full distance you can. Yeah. Uh within the first area. So you if you even if you dash, you can still stop and move tile by tile. Okay. Which is completely different. Because you used to get hit. If you accidentally clicked basically next to where you wanted to go and were left in the open, you got punished because you couldn't move. Whereas in this, it lets you finish your move because it's time, not action points. Yeah. Is this, this one's your, your battling aliens, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Did you see the, the Queen? No. No, so you watched a different video. I watched a half an hour video from. See, because I didn't go towards people playing it, I went towards the, uh, the actual official video. Right, okay, released by the company. I didn't do that. I you just look people. for who released it, and it's an easier way of finding it. Okay, well, I just so, looked at for people to play it. I went straight towards the developer playing it, 
and uh, it's it looks interesting. Aliens based on what looks like mutational crab people. It's quite interesting. Yeah, they look and then pretty the, gross. Yeah, and then the queen came out. The queen was enormous. Yeah. And because every single surface, right, the bullets are ballistic. So when you fire a certain number of rounds from a weapon, but you tell a unit to do that, they hit what they hit. Yeah. They don't fire wildly off to the side. If they hit a piece of scenery, it gets destroyed. Yeah. Uh, you fire six rounds they have a certain chance of so if four of the rounds hit the enemy the other two hit something else right um, and all of the scenery is destroyable so when the queen came in the, the developer had one of his men in a tower yeah. she just walked straight through the tower the tower collapsed and killed him that was how she killed one of the units uh, it also seems to be that they have armour which defends them and that has an armour rank that you have to fight through to start crippling. Yeah. Also got bleed effects which can kill people over time. Doesn't seem to be they don't seem to run out the bleed effects, not from what I saw. Mm. You do have to reload, but not in the pre alpha that they showed. And from the looks of it, the heavy can't climb, which is different from XCOM. The heavy has to use jump jets to get into place. Because okay. their armor is too heavy to go up ladders or steps, so they yeah. use jump jets. To but it gives a huge range, so they mm -hmm. can jump like half the map. Um, and they have a rocket launcher, and it it looks vast. It it looks like in a lot of ways they've made it more complicated, but they've also made it a lot fairer. Like yeah. in XCOM, if you accidentally clicked on something, you were punished. In this, you're not. You can run up if you say if you get an advantage from being closer to the enemy unit, right? Yeah. You could, if, if they're halfway into your movement speed area, you could run up, shoot them in the face, and then run away. Because <laughs> it's time. So you, you can use that however you want. Right. And it's not a count, counting down timer. The timer is, is used by them doing actions. Yeah. But you can run up, shoot them, from a, use your half your movement to shoot them, and then half your movement to hide. You seem to have watched a far more detailed video than I did. Yeah, I watched the actual developer's pre-alpha footage. Yeah. Yeah, which is the better way to go if you want to get yeah. as much data as possible. It's literally one of the points I've written down. I have said, more interesting than the other one. Yeah, because it's actual fighting, you know, yeah. you know what you're doing. The end screen was quite interesting. They said something about, well done, thank you for fighting the war, but you know what has to happen with the, the infected. Bye. <laughs> Almost as if every unit you use only gets one fight. Which is interesting. I'm not sure if that's true or if that was just a wee video, that, a wee picture that went up at the end, but it was interesting. Mm. And he never touched on it. Interesting. Yeah. But there's uh, also the, the units that were available were Sniper, Assault, Heavy, and there's going to be a Technician, I think. And the Technician is capable of repairing uh, disabled limbs. Hmm. So if your character gets a disabled limb and is like hobbling, the technician can run up and go Pssst, with the magic spray they use at football games yeah. and then run away and that person's <laughs> legs fixed. Sort of like in uh, certain Fallout games with certain perks, you could just jab a stim pack in your leg and your broken leg was fixed. I think they've also got, that's also a plot line to one of the Rick and Morty episodes. Okay. It is. Are Morty they? hurts his Marty Mar Morty hurts his leg and uh, Rick injects him with something and it fixes him. Did he inject him with a new leg? No. Okay. A potion from the future. <sighs> or from another dimension. One of the two. I think it's from another dimension. Well, they can take it back to the other dimension. I care not for it. Um. I like Backtown Kalto from Star Wars though, where you just float in this tank of goo and get magically healed by the <laughs> like the lured style water that you're floating in. It's a Kalto tank, right, so it's holy water, basically. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's uh, it looked really interesting, Phoenix Point. I really, uh, they seem to have said they've made it different and complicated, but also they've made it a bit more rewarding. I mean, you feel even more fragile than before, yeah. but none of it is because you've made a silly wee mistake that you can't fix. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Also, it just it looks a lot more realistic as well when it comes to the way the cover works. So it, it's uh, yeah. I'm, it looks I'm more fun. It looks like more fun than the other one. Yeah, 
because you're actually just straight into a fight, not sneaky sneaky in a way that might not work properly. I like I just keep calling it the other one. I don't actually call it by its real name. Phoenix Doctrine, yeah. Phoenix Doctrine. No, Phantom Doctrine. Phantom Doctrine. <laughs> Phoenix Point in Phantom Doctrine. But that will be the crossover. Phoenix Doctrine. Yeah. Phantom Point. Um, What's pointing at me? I can't yeah. see it. Oh, it's it's my mum behind the curtain. Um, what other uh, in other news? What other news? I borrow your paper just so I can feel like the BBC. In another news, I've never seen anybody ever do that on the news in yeah, real life. Well, you need to pay more attention. An IGN reviewer, right, called Philip Musin. Myusen, 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 seems to have um, has been accused of, and from what I can see, I find against Philip Myusen, plagiarized a review of a game from a small time YouTuber called Boomstick Gaming. It's the game's called Dead Cells, which is like a roguelike game. Yeah. Uh, it's recently out and he seems to have plagiarised it so he's just what copied it word for word it's not word for word it's, it's basically it was described as high school level this is a quote high school level word changes to try and get past plagiarism rules Ah. so it's things like um, <sighs> putting in stupid little uh no, grammatical errors so I, I, I hate when you do that it's like uh, and then your mind goes blank it's like like words like a constructed have been replaced with assembled ah okay that's sort of what you're talking about but the whole thing flows in the same way and in the same okay. sort of. now I always view on the favor uh, err on the side of the people who are accused of it because I got accused of plagiarism once by a teacher and then she realised I hadn't done it because mm -hmm. you can't plagiarise lecture notes so she had to backtrack. So I always err on the side of, of the person who's accused because it's very easy to write something very similar without having done it yeah. deliberately. Uh, obviously there are cases which are cut and dry, but sometimes you could accidentally write something similar. It has happened before. Yeah, so I always err on the side of, you know, you, you don't put the innocent in prison because it ruins the whole justice system. So I err on the side of... And it's until proven guilty. Yeah. Unfortunately, from what I've seen, guilty is sin. You know, it's just the videos, the reviews are basically identical. Like, really. And the, the other guy had his up, I think a couple of weeks before he had his, Philip Mears, and, and it's basically identical. I mean, there's entire paragraphs you can pick out which are basically the same, but those wee changes in words where it's like assembled instead of constructed, you know, that sort of jazz. It's not particularly smart the way he's... And I don't even see why he has. The, the video that he made was only like four minutes long. Really? I've been talking about this for more than four minutes. The video he, play, he supposedly plays around plagiarized was only four minutes long. No, the video he made and the one he copied because or is accused right, of copying. Okay. They're both only like four minutes. If you're only making a four minute review, how difficult is that? Why are you doing that? We've been talking about this for more than four minutes. Do you think it's possible that it's just a really uncanny co coincidence? No. It's if they could find a way of proving it I'd happily believe there's it. There's only so many ways you can say the sky is blue. Like that kind of thing. No. It's all the same. Every section is there. Every section is arrayed the same way. It's all got the same content. It's just tiny little word choices. You know, there's only so many ways you can say the sky is blue. But if you're talking about all the colours of the universe, there's only so many reasons that you'd say the same thing about all of them in the same order. Okay. Even if you took the actual spectrum and put them in order, that excuses that. But then why you're saying all the same things, coming to all the same conclusions. They both say phrases like, makes it seem worthwhile. It feels worthwhile. Okay. At the end of what, it's just, what? It's, it's, too, it's, it's too similar. 
I mean, what you're suggesting is the whole Shakespeare type and uh, sorry, the whole monkeys type in Shakespeare scenario. And I just well, don't believe no, that. No, I'm not. I'm not exactly using that as an example because that's yet to be achieved. Done, but I do know people that. Have what do you mean that yet to be done? It's <laughs> it's a concept. It's not an actual thing. <laughs> Someone's gonna do it one day. You can't. You'd be the one doing it instead of the monkey then point is is that you're saying there's only so many you can say the sky is blue correct but this is such a complicated game uh, just like any game is that there's only so many ways you can say it you can come to the same conclusions but there's no reason why you'd have the exact same word choice exact same points right. tiny little differences you're talking about so many reviews that you can pick two out and they'll look similar but that this is just ridiculous it's too close to it's that. too close right well, that's unfortunate that he's done that. Yeah, so I'll keep an eye on that, but IGN have taken the review down while they investigate. Who's so IGN, sorry? They do game reviews, stuff like that. What is it, what's it short for? In, uh, Imagine Games Network. Okay. Formerly, I think it's just known as IGN now. Okay. So they've taken it down, so they're taking it reasonably seriously. Well, that's good. Mm, so we'll see. Keep an eye on that. Um, keep an eye on that. Pardon? You can keep an eye on that. That's, what, <laughs> that's what I said. Uh, EA's Battlefield 5 has very low pre order numbers. Uh, this is, I told you a little this while ago. This is the ago. Star Wars uh, Loot Crate thing, was it? Not Loot Crate, but. Um, Company, yeah, they, yeah. They, they, they released Battlefront 2. Yeah. Um, this release in Battlefield 5 in the next couple of months, it's like October ish time. Yeah. And it's low pre-order numbers, and this is after I told you about the uh, the analysts saying that it was going to outsell Red Dead Two. Mm-hmm. No, that was a, that was a joke to begin with. I called it at the time as being rubbish, and I've been proven right because the lower pre pre-order numbers for Battlefield Five, which is set in World War Two, is uh, they're very very low. Uh, and last year, Call of Duty, I think it was last year, did a World War Two game. It didn't do very well. Yeah. Uh, so that's one of the reasons there's some reasons why people think it's not doing well uh, that's one it's launch is surrounded by Fallout 76 Red Dead 2 Black Ops 4 uh, and Black Ops 4 sorry yeah um, uh, and Titanfall 2 a very 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 good shooter that came out last year or the year before uh, tanked because it was released in a crowded window and yeah so they've done this before yeah um it's never good to... Yeah, Black Ops 4 is a shooter and Red Dead's... You know, you're putting all these gun games out, specifically Black Ops 4, which is essentially the same thing as Call of Duty, and you're trying to say, oh, look at ours, is different. It just gets swamped. Yep. Um, another reason that people have put down that it's uh, it's not going to do well is that it's made by EA. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's sort of... That's my favourite one. I think that's... Uh, I think if I hadn't heard somebody saying that, I probably would have put it in anyway. <laughs> um, and it's also it has women in it. Okay. And that's caused a big backlash because a lot of people have said, "Why?" Because this is a World War Two game. I don't remember one-armed women running around. Oh, you? Well, I don't know. Maybe your memory shot if you were there. No, but. The, the talk, like, the, it's fair enough if you want to go female character they could work that in but the people around you should be 95% men for it to make sense this is historical rewriting just to please some really angry journalists and vocal people on the internet that's all it is and that annoys me it annoys me all the way to my core um, because you're t- like when it came to the uh, game, was it the video they put out? Like half the people that were right in the camera were women. One of them had one arm. She was wearing a baseball bat. I don't know why, or something like it. Maybe a fence post with one arm, and the other one was a metal arm. What? The standard of prosthesis during World War Two was a metal, was a big wooden hand. That was it. Yeah. Just a big wooden hand. They had to give children full size hands that they would grow into. And you genuinely think they were running around with like metal claws. It's not, she's not a pirate. <laughs> it's just, 
And I know there were Russian sniper teams that were women and, and lots of women, and obviously the, 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 the Maquis, the French Resistance, all that sort of jazz had female fighters. But the, I'm sorry, the standing army of America, of, of Britain, of Germany, of Russia was not 50% women. No. That's just the historical accuracy of it. So it, to me, it's annoying to rewrite it just to make a couple of really angry vocal people happy. My counter argument is it's a game. But it's completely destroying the immersion. It would be like if you were playing a World War II game and then like a space shuttle went past. What? Or you're playing a medieval game and a guy with a lightsaber rocks into the fight. Lightsaber in one hand and a machine gun in the other. So what? What is this? It's, it destroys the immersion when you do that. Ruins the game completely. I also don't like it when people... I mean, I've said this about Black Ops. Uh, hate the fact there's no single player. They've rewritten history to make their single player more appealing. That's annoying. And it says the thing though, right? Their fan base aren't happy either. As I said, you can put women in, right? You just can't have them be 50% or 90% because it's not true. People are going to immediately get completely drawn out of the immersion of the game. And instead of being smart about it, they've just dumped them in and then said, well, if you don't like it, don't buy the game. And that's exactly what people are doing. They're refusing to buy the game. Yeah. I mean, that's just bad management. And... Um, there's going to be someone somewhere in the chain who said, right, we need to change this to be more inclusive. And they've just... It's not for inclusive as the reasons. It's to please some journalists who are angry. Let's be honest. It's... Yeah, but what? If I was going to say they've just gone about it the wrong way. Aye, I agree with that. Yeah, you're right. It's They could have put women in and made it fine. But this is just too far. It's rewriting history and destroying the immersion of the game. I mean, one of them's running around with a metal hand. Yeah, that makes no sense. Um, Unless it's, what is it, like Bucky Bar? Huh? Nothing. What? I was going to say something, but I can't remember if you're that far into the... Into let's the not ruin it for universe. anybody else. Yeah. Anyway. I think I know what you're talking about, but let's not ruin it for anybody else. Um, and recently, some people at EA have claimed that they're a new company since the fiasco last year with the Battlefront 2 uh, crystals and the progress errors, you know, we, there's no progression system that works properly in Battlefront yeah. 2 um, but they've recently added a, a couple of upgrades to that game, right. patches and stuff like that, Yeah. apparently have ruined the game even more <laughs> and they've reactivated the crystals so you can buy to progress faster so no, they're not. They're, that's even worse. <laughs> They've not made a mistake and then learned from it. They've made a mistake and then quietly repeated <laughs> it to try and make more money. Um, oh, that's tough. I mean, there was an EA Origins user, right? That's their platform for playing some of their games on the computer. Yeah, I've got Origin, yeah. Yeah, he lost his account. This has happens to a lot of people. Um, and EA wouldn't help. Um, the guy's name in this particular pardon me, the guy's name in this particular instance was Flying Officer, this happens to quite a few people, there's a lot of people saying to him yeah this happened to me and their <coughs> EA Origins response to him if it was a man, I think that's the assumption, uh, I think he might have said that he was a man at one point but I'm not sure, um, the response was that they had no record of the user and they basically tried to fend him off yeah uh, eventually they did give him back his account well he had to make a new account and they gave him all of his games but we think we don't know what happened to his progression in those games mm -hmm. um, but a lot of other people just don't get their games back or which they've paid for or they only get like 500 quids worth of games but they've put a thousand in so they don't get all the games back and um the simple fact of the matter is he would not have got anything if there hadn't been a huge wave of support online and at one point before that wave of support came EA said to him that they would consider his case what do you mean consider he spent thousands of pounds on stuff 
and you've just taken it from him. Yeah, it's not. On. That that's theft. That's all that is. It's just theft. Yeah. Why have you? You can't be doing that. So it's a good thing he got his stuff back, but don't buy anything in the age of origins because it's not backed up. There's no guarantee on it at all. They will try and keep your money if they take it back. I've not bought anything on origins. So I, I the only reason I had it was so I could play The Sims. Yeah, just don't, don't do it. I mean, um, one of the reasons that they're trying to claim to be a new company is that Patrick Soderlund left recently. He is leaving or has left. He's a some sort of executive director of something, or chief developer or something yeah. like that. But uh, you know, he's the one who's been massively involved in a lot of the decisions that have just made EA a lot of money, but caused a lot of people to hate them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I recently bought Battlefront 2 so I can play it and try it and actually talk about it with the experience of having played it. But the only reason I bought it was because it was 85% off. So EA basically get no money. Yeah. And that's exactly the only... I was only ever going to buy it if I could limit the amount of money EA got from it. And this is exactly what's happened. They're going to get basically night from that sale. So that's brilliant. Um, and that's the way a lot of people feel. It's why Battlefield 5 has no pre-orders or low pre-order numbers because so many people are unhappy especially there's a lot of women who are angry at putting all those women in it because it it's a totally meaningless success that hinders actual change because people get angry at the idea of changing society when <laughs> these bad changes happen you know yeah it's, it's like Let's put in women into Battlefield 5 and totally wreck the game in the name of equality. Let's rewrite history as well while we're at it. Okay, I really didn't like that. So the next time you say anything in, uh, along those lines at all, I'm just going to immediately say no. Because last time it was terrible. Yeah, I understand where you're coming from, yeah. You cannot rewrite history. We, we tried any... to do it, but it was such a flop, we decided to get rid of it again. No, I'm talking about any change in anything because the people are immediately going to say, well, hold on a minute, this is getting ridiculous. If you can rewrite history to make people feel better, then I'm not working with you on anything. Sort of like, uh, let's build a charity. Oh no, we've been using all the money to pay for sexual favours. Oxfam. Nobody's going to work with Oxfam now. Right? And you just end up with similar sort of patterns. Somebody does something that you really don't like, that you have no time for, in this case, rewriting history to make people feel better, and everybody just backs away and says, right, well, I'm not working with you because I'm not having people rewrite World War II. Why is it okay that we can rewrite World War II to put women in, but we can't rewrite it to take the Holocaust out because that's a crime? If you can't rewrite it, you can't rewrite it. End of story. Yeah. So it, it... it, I, it's the one thing I cannot stomach is people rewriting fact to make people feel better. Because I mean, look at all the like the real women who were involved in World War Two, the amazing things they did. It's sort of shortcoming them. It does. It reduces the influence that they had because now people are like, oh, well, that didn't happen. Well, maybe it did. It's just, it's a, just they just don't know anymore. It's hundreds and hundreds of women doing it all at once. Is totally ruining the story. You know, it's not this female... I think there was a female sniper team or several female snipers. Female snipers, for sure, on the Russian side, right? Is this in real life or in the game? Yeah, in real life. Okay. Instead of putting in units of female snipers, because they're probably not going to have you be Russian, let's be honest. They've just had hundreds of females with prosthetic limbs batting people in the face. I think at one point your character's going to get sexually assaulted during the video. That's the whole point. And a woman comes and saves her. But, you know, what about the Wrens? They actually did stuff. Like, Wrens got bombed because they were working at, um, at uh, actual uh, air bases and radar stations. But that's out the window now. That's going to be out of people's thoughts because they're going to be laughing inside at all these women running around with baseball bats with fake hands. So it, the way you're making it, it sounds like they're dumbing down what women's contribution they've tried to watch. up it but because they've tried to up it and everybody knows that didn't happen people are going to treat everything like yeah. it didn't happen 
And quite reasonably so, because if 96% of what somebody's telling you is rubbish, you'd probably throw the whole lot out and not be that worse off. Whereas in this case, no, you kind of want the 4%. Yeah. But it's just, I think they've, the response they've missed as well. The mark. Well, no, it's, they've not missed the mark. This is what they tried to do. And they then tried to back it up with aggression. Well, if you don't like it, don't, it's, uh, don't buy it. Um, but they've just attacked their own customer base. It's a, there's a hashtag called get woke, get broke, where you demand that your customers get you know, woke. I don't know what that means, but I think it means... I've never heard that phrase before in my life. Woke. I think it's an American phrase, and I think it means like... see the sexism and racism around you and do something about it. Right. I think that's what it roughly means. Yeah. But <clears throat> but if you're forcing people, well, you know, that's like your customer base. Well, if you don't like this, then don't buy from us. Fine. And then all the companies go bust because of it. It's, it spawned the phrase, get woke, go broke. Hmm. Because people are trying to force their customers. This, you can use games to guide your customers mm -hmm. towards it. They're forcing people. It's one of the reasons why certain arguments for, you know, uh, against racism, against misogynism, against all that jazz just don't work because they're, no, you have to agree with me or you're a sexist. No. <laughs> no, I don't. So then you stop listening to what the person has to say rather than talking to them and then you might convince them. Yeah. And that's exactly what's happened here. It's just oh stupid. Um, small piece of information. I'm just going to say this as a sentence and we're going to move on. Apparently Halo Infinite is Halo 6. You should consider it Halo 6. Uh, it's going to deal more with the Master Chief storyline uh, rather or than... John. <laughs> or John. Rather than... I think a lot of people who were in 5 said that they liked the um, other viewpoint because yeah. you play another character as well in 5 as well as the Master Chief but they wanted more Master Chief not and so it's going to be solely the Master Chief ok so Fallout 76 have released some more information finally instead of giving 400 interviews where they give the same answer 76 million times they've actually given a bit more information at QuakeCon which is their in house uh, reveal platform like their version of E3 mm -hmm. And remember how I was mentioning griefing or trolling when it came yes. to Rainbow Six Siege, where I popped into a match, got beamed in the yeah. face 73 on, times. On purpose, friendly fire. Exactly. So Fallout 76 is an online Fallout game, right? Yeah. So when you meet another person, apparently there's no NPCs in the game, non-playable oh, yes, characters. Yes, I, I know. So it's just humans. So oh, they're okay. obviously worried, right? That you're going to get gunned down by every human you meet. Yeah. And it's, I think it's called griefing, or we, I would say trolling, or being a beep. So, <laughs> The technical term. Yeah, so they've put in anti-griefing measures, as they call it, uh, and explained how player versus player fights work and the bounty system. Now, the whole idea is that the player versus player fight is if you see someone you want to have a fight with, you shoot them. So okay. far, so good. And it does a tiny, tiny, minuscule amount of the damage. If they want to have a fight, they shoot back. And you have a tit-a-tit. -tit. Yeah. And the winner gets some loot. Not weapons or armour, but like scrap that the person's picked up. Right? Okay. And they get some uh, caps as well. The caps are used for fast travelling. You don't fast travel for free in this game. You have to pay to do it. Okay. Do you know what fast travelling is? No. You go to the map and click on a place you've already been and you fast travel there. Okay. So in previous Fallout games you did that for free. In this one you have, that's what the caps are for because there's no NPCs to spend caps on. So this is why caps are, this is so how caps just, are used. So they've just come up with a reason to have them. Exactly. They've repurposed them. And that's, that's fine. Meant, yeah. That's fine. Um, now, if the person shoots you and you don't want to fight, you don't shoot back. Now, they do a small pity poo of damage. But if they keep shooting, eventually that will add up and you'll die. But because you didn't join in a fight with them, they don't get... They've killed you without your permission, which sounds strange, but that's the way it is. So they don't get any loot. They don't get any caps, right? 
Yeah. All players on their map disappear. They can't see where anyone is. <clears throat> they get a giant X above their head, which appears on everybody's map, so everybody knows where they are, and they get a bounty on their head as well. And so people are enticed to go and kill them, to make them pay. But the bounty comes out of their caps. <laughs> so if somebody has caps on them, when they commit a crime, they the bounty that's paid for whoever kills them comes out of their caps. So if you were to kill another player against their will, the bounty that was paid to whoever killed you and brought you to justice would be paid from your purse. That's such a good idea. Yep. So I they get really no like reward that. and they could lose stuff from it. Now people might still take advantage of it. And you're like, if you shed all your caps, where's the harm? But it's an online game that's a game for service. If Bethesda have misjudged it, they can just re-rig it. So people start losing items. Like if you kill someone against their will, the weapon, you could lose a weapon or a piece of armour that you really like. That's going to stop it dead. Oh, yeah. Um, so that looks, they've really gone all out to stop it. And I, I really like what they've come up with. That sounds like an amazing idea. Yeah. Uh, they also released information uh, on the leveling system so you get special points for strength perception endurance charisma intelligence agility and luck and that's the uh, attribute system that they use in fallout games okay and you can only have a certain i think it's 57 or if you get bobbleheads i don't know if they're in this game but if you did you'd get more so you get like uh, 64 mm -hmm. and that's the maximum number of points you can put in to the special system yeah. and only a maximum of 15 can go in any one attribute and those determine how many perk cards and what classification of perk cards you can use so the perk system in this is not level based by you unlock one as you level you get a card so you unlock perk cards from leveling up and you can trade perk cards and you can find them right and you can equip them and you can level them up so if you've got five points in strength, you can have a five star card or you could have a three and a two yeah. or five ones. And they've all got perks like reduce uh, in, you know, like, uh, reduce the weight of ammunition or that sort of thing. Or there's one as well that you can use alcohol to revive a knocked out teammate. <laughs> <laughs> it's called, uh, what's that word for a fake doctor? like a bad doctor yeah it's an American thing I can't remember it but that's what it's called it'll come to me or it won't maybe I can find a picture of it and put it up but uh, it's, it looks like the perks are a lot of fun um, but there have been some interesting questions which is you have to trade with other players in the game if you want to trade because there's no non-playable characters so you can't go and buy something that you would like you have to right. find it, make it, or trade another player for it. Quack. It, it could mean? be Quack, Doctor. I'll find the picture and put it up. Um, but that's interesting because if there are no NPC traders, does that mean that there are no NPC human enemies? Because they said there was a storyline in it. So if there's no NPCs, how does the storyline work? If there's no... Yeah. That doesn't make sense. And there's no NPC, there there'll be no human enemies either. There won't be a... It would all be monsters yeah. and that's it. Um, it would be interesting to see how Fallout 76 works considering it's buggy history, to be honest. But, uh, you know, Bethesda has a history of putting out games with lots of bugs. But maybe yeah. as a, an online game, it gives them an excuse to fix it. Because, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, only a couple... Of, like, last month, they came out with a 2.5 gig Fallout 4 patch. So, obviously, the games need regular attention. But at least with this one, they could argue, you know, why they're doing that. Mm -hmm. Um, and apparently at least for now you will not be able to buy perk packs with human money real money so that's uh, hopefully it stays that way um, but there has been some conversation that uh, a mod for Fallout called Fallout Miami which modifies Fallout 4 yeah. um, has drawn some attention from Fallout 76 because Bethesda have said that they won't be allowing another company to make a Fallout game like Fallout New Vegas was made by Obsidian and it's considered to, at least definitely I agree, when it comes to its story and gameplay mechanics, Fallout New Vegas is the best. Between Fallout 3, Fallout 4 and Fallout New Vegas, I think New Vegas is the best. Mm -hmm. 
and they're not going to be allowing anybody to make one like that so modders have started to modify games so oh, okay. Fallout Miami just looks like an entire new Fallout game it looks really good um, but that's might have drawn a wee bit of attention from Fallout 76 especially from people like me who just want a single player experience and not this online nonsense mm-hmm. I don't know if I'll ever play 76 because of that um, but uh yeah, it's it's looking up interesting. Um, when it comes to the anti-griefing and playing with other people online, the whole point of the game is that you fight monsters from the sounds of it. Like I said, there seems to be no NPCs, so you must be fighting monsters. Yeah. And one of the thoughts that I had, and I looked up and found this called the pacifist flag system, right? Mm-hmm. Now this is because, this is the part in the agenda where I'd be talking about fighting monsters. But then I thought to myself, and it turns out other people have as well, and Bethesda have already solved this, that if a human jumps in front of another human while fighting a monster, that would engage a PvP fight. So if I'm shooting at a monster and you want to fight with me, you could walk in the way of my bullets and then shoot me back, that ah, engages a PvP. Right. So they've got the pacifist flag, which means that if you shoot somebody while fighting a monster, it doesn't count. That's cool. Yeah. So you cannot enter into a PvP fight. So even if you shoot them by mistake, they shoot back, doesn't start a fight. If you shoot them after they've shot you and you shoot them by mistake, doesn't start a fight. You cannot get into a PvP fight with the pacifist flag. Let's have to see how that system works, but that seems to be how they're going to go about it. So they've um, really, really properly thought all about it. Yeah. Then, yeah. They seem to be doubling down on the whole radiation because it doesn't just hurt you in this game. It, it causes random mutations. All right. So uh, what, what was it? One of them was called like bird bones or something like that where you can jump really high, but you take a extra damage because your strength goes down. Some weird like that. It's interesting to see if those mutations are long term or if they're short term and they go away. Yeah. But uh, that seems to be, they seem to have added that system in, and that looks quite interesting. I, I really want to see how that works. Um, but they've also there was a system in it, or will be a system in it. Sorry, there goes my voice again. <laughs> where you can get nuclear codes to fire nuclear missiles around the map, and a lot of people were wondering, well, does that mean that people are going to just bomb each other's settlements? And apparently, no, because it's going to be very, very difficult. You're going to have to work with other players to activate a nuke. And the nukes are used so that you can bomb a part of the wasteland. The radiation builds up and that creates super mutated monsters. And that's where you get the best loot from. And then the radiation dies down and you have to fire another missile. So nobody's going to waste their time bombing a settlement when they could bomb a bit of the wasteland to get extra good loot. That's the top tier mechanic. So people are going to use it to get extra weapons and fight harder monsters rather than blow up Jerry if you're doing the road to the <laughs> they have really thought it all through mm-hmm. um, an interesting thing for me is that they've s- previous Bethesda games Fallout 4, Skyrim Definitive Edition on Xbox One has had lo- have had lots of modding done by the community Bethesda games have a lot of people who play them who make mods for them how are they going to do that with an online game so they've been trying to create started to design a modding mechanic for the game that allows people to mod it even though it's an online multiplayer game oh cool so they really from all these different systems that I've mentioned they're really putting a lot of effort in to make it make sense Um, they've said that weight management is a factor so therefore ammunition is no longer weightless so you have to control how much ammo you carry around so they're trying to make it as realistic as possible. Yeah, so it could be that you'll see a lot more people running around with melee weapons than you would have during the single player campaigns of previous Fallout games. Yeah. When after a while you've got forty thousand rounds of ammunition, so there's no you know, you've you're able to supply a small army, so there's no real need to use a melee weapon where you just get yourself in danger. Um now, this was an interesting one, right? The they did speak I don't think um, they did speak about this system, right? But I don't think they explained some of it. The VATS system, the value added tax system, no, the VATS system is the Vault Tech Assisted Targeting System, right? Which allows you in the single player games to pause time a little and you're able to aim at 
certain targets and even certain body parts. Now in this game you have to have a certain perk card equipped to target certain body parts, specific body parts if you want to, but how are they going to work slow down time mechanic into a multiplayer online game? I don't know how they... I don't... I don't know. Yeah, they haven't said that either, so it'll be interesting to see how they do that. They might have just removed it. Maybe. But it'll be interesting to see how they do that. Yeah. Um, and as I said, there's still not much information on how the story's mechanics, what the story mechanics will work, especially considering there's apparently no NPCs in the game. Is it all going to be done by radio? <laughs> um, but as I said, they've put a lot of effort into trolling other players and into adapting it. They've not just put it online. You know, um, I'm hoping. See, the thing is, my last experience of a great Bethesda game that was made online was Elder Scrolls Online, and it's a roughly it's a very enjoyable game, Elder Scrolls Online, but it's not an Elder Scrolls game. It's not the same calibre as Skyrim, Oblivion, or Morrowind that I've played before it. Elder Scrolls Online is just a different thing. It's a lot of fun, a lot of exploration, but it's not a proper Elder Scrolls game. It just doesn't have all the mechanics in it necessary. Right. And I'm wondering if this will be what happens here. Because I love my single player Fallout games. This might just be nonsense. And they might have to remove so many of the mechanics, which they've tried to avoid doing from the looks of it, but they might remove so much of the game that it's just a different beast altogether and I'm not interested. Like the fact you can't talk to it. NPCs were NPCs were the one thing that weren't a problem before. And that's the thing they've taken out. I just I don't know how well that's gonna work. Well I suppose your only way to find out is to actually play the game. Yeah, probably rather not. <laughs> <laughs> but it just disappoints me that we can't just have a single player game because if they're making a Fallout 5 as well as this, brilliant. That's fine. That's what you know, okay, fair enough, let's try something a bit different. But if they've made this instead of a Fallout 5, uh, no. No, I mean, cookie ridiculous side quests for ludicrously insane NPCs is a massive part of Fallout. You can't remove that and expect it to still work. How are you going to get across that ridiculous, nonsense, racist, sexist, 1950s, you know, 1940s, 1920s lifestyle? Probably 1950s would be the right one to go for. If there's no NPCs. I mean, I think one of the big things about it is that health and safety is like a joke. If you die at work, you'll get compensation, but it's a small amount of it, and well, that's just a risk you have to take. That's sort of the attitude that I would ascribe to Fallout. How can you keep that attitude going if there's no NPCs? You're just going to be coming across wee computers telling you stories, and that'll be it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm interested, but I don't know if it will, if it will be a proper Fallout game. Hmm. There's also a legal issue. I'm not sure how Bethesda are getting away with making a Fallout online game because I think legally the Fallout they were sold the rights to make Fallout games as long as they didn't make an online game. But then when they made Fallout Four or Fallout New Vegas, they got sued. And then that pe- the people who sued them lost. So maybe they lost the ability to control Quite what Bethesda are doing when they sued and lost. So that's why Bethesda are able to make 76. Sounds like it. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah. So it also they've put perks in the game. So if you want to play a single player experience that happens to be online, you can do that. So there's certain players like the lone perk, sorry, the lone wanderer gives you an experience boost if you play it by yourself. And they've also got communication methods where you can run up to real people in the world and go, "Would you like to join my team?" Yes, I would. And you put your thumb up and you wave at them and you do all sorts of nonsense like that. But yeah, they've seemed to try, try really seem to try and make a a Fallout experience online that works for the players but I'm not sure if it will be a Fallout experience and as of recording this we're still waiting for Red Dead Redemption 2's next gameplay video which comes out I think the game comes out in October so we're just waiting a little while then yeah so we're just waiting for the next video I thought we'd have one by now but they're still keeping that close to the chest but um, yeah that's it for me that's all the news I've got and I have no news Okay, so um, 
yeah, that's everything for today. That's all the news. That's what we've been playing. Um, we hope you enjoyed this Shadowcast and that you like and subscribe below if you did and that you leave a comment if you have anything to say. Yes, we'd always appreciate a comment. All comments from anyone and everyone. Um, we'll just ignore the nasty ones. No, we'll answer the nasty ones. It's just... What uh, if they're just yelling at us? Well, if, it, if it's nonsense talk, then we can't answer <laughs> that. But if it's constructive, we'll listen. Um, but uh, you can also follow us on Facebook at, at uh, overshadow.shadowcast and you can email us at overshadow.shadowcast at gmail.com and um, well that's everything so I will say goodbye and thank you for having me again absolutely no problem uh, I don't know why you're saying it that way because it doesn't run when you're not here you're not a guest <laughs> but uh, thanks for having me as well you're very welcome Yay! it's always enjoyable so uh, yeah we hope to see you next time <laughs> And uh, take care. Farewell. Ta-da.